everyone, today I'm going to be unboxing this bagged Hoover Upright. This is a Quad A vacuum cleaner, which means it gets A rating for energy, A rating for dust emission, A rating for dust pickup from carpets, and A rating for dust pickup from a hard floor. Now the reason I bought this particular vacuum cleaner is I think it will be discontinued very soon. Although it scores quadruple A rating, it doesn't comply with the latest EU vacuum regulations that started in September 2017. All the ratings are okay apart from the noise level. This particular vacuum is quite noisy at 89 decibels and the new regulations call for the maximum decibels of a vacuum cleaner to be 80. So this cleaner will be phased out and possibly replaced with a quieter version or it might be phased out altogether. Okay then, without any further ado, I better get this vacuum opened and assembled. A few comments on the reviews from Argos have stated about the assembly being a bit tricky. So I thought I'd get one and assemble it in a video. So if you're having trouble, if you bought this, and hopefully you've searched YouTube, we can assemble it together because it might be easier to see what I'm doing rather than reading the instructions. Okay, right, that's the correct way up, that's good. Right, first thing, don't discard these. In the top of the packaging, we've got two of the cleaning tools. This is your upholstery slash stair nozzle in this quite fetching translucent grey. And also a dusting brush, but that is pretty hard. That's almost like a nail brush. So I wouldn't use that on any, on any delicate surfaces. It's really, yeah, that, that's very stiff dusting brush, I'm afraid. So it's so a thumbs down for the dusting brush. Next thing out is the handle. So that's one thing obviously you have to assemble. And it's normally two screws. Yep, there's a screw here at the top. There's also a screw behind that sticker. Then we've got an extension wand that also incorporates a scabbard extra long crevice tool that nests inside the extension wand when not in use. Next out of the box we've got your PET turbo nozzle. So this incorporates a rotating brush that is designed to help clean pet hair off your upholstery and pet bedding etc. And some more pieces that need assembling. This is your hose support tube. It's also the carry handle and it's also where the PET turbo tool is stored. So that will need screwing onto the back of the machine. And next out we've got the stretch hose. This is designed to stretch right up a standard flight of stairs. Before the end of the video, I'll test that. I think it does but we'll just make sure that it will stretch. I think they're pretty long hoses on these Hoover Enigma vacuum cleaners, so you should have no trouble getting to the top of the stairs with that. Now all that's left, I think, is the cleaner. There's, of course, the mains lead there. Got our instruction manual. Out it comes. So this is an unusual vacuum for two reasons. I mean, it's a quad A. You don't get very many quad A vacuum cleaners at the moment, but this is quad A based on the old EU regulations. But the fact, what's more unusual about this particular Hoover is it's bagged. Most people seem to go for bagless vacuums nowadays. But there are some of you who maybe have tried bagless and don't like how messy they can be to empty and have decided you want a bagged vacuum again. So at least Hoover still offer a bagged vacuum in their range. They offer this, they also offer the very similar Hoover Pure Power and they offer an Enigma cylinder vacuum as well that's bagged. So it's quite a smart finish. The build quality is a little dubious, I'm afraid, with some of these vacuums. 
but it's a nice finish. It's uh, quite an unusual matte black and silver. So it's uh, quite a masculine looking vacuum cleaner. Whoops, a daisy. Oh, that's funny though, look at that. That's the color inside. So it's obviously spray painted on. So if you're not too careful with your vacuum, you might find if you scratch it up too much, that black finish won't look quite so stylish. Mm, it's been fitted with the new H74 bags. So these are a lot better than the paper type bags. They self seal when you take them out of the machine. So I've never seen those actually before. Um, Argos do sell bags and in fact I bought a pack of bags with the machine but I have a feeling that they're the paper bags Argos sell. These will probably cost more but um, in my experience these cloth type bags on any bagged vacuum tend to filter better and they tend to maintain the suction better. So I suggest looking for bags with the code H74 on them if you want to get new bags for this. I'll have a look at the set of bags I bought from Argos today with the cleaner and we'll compare them, but I have a feeling they are the paper ones. Underneath the bag, we have a filter, which is a dual layer. And also underneath, or on the back of the machine, we've got another filter. This is the exhaust filter here. That's located just by pulling down on a little clip. And because this gets an A rating for dust emissions, this is probably a HEPA filter and they're normally washable as well. I'll go through the features of this vacuum cleaner later in the video and do a very quick demonstration. But first of all, let's get started. You get this getting started leaflet alongside the more comprehensive instruction book. So that basically tells us how to assemble the vacuum. So if you don't like instructions, if you watch this video, hopefully, uh, by the end of it you'll have the machine assembled and working. The first thing to do is assemble the handle onto the top of the cleaner via two flathead screws. One's located behind this sticker to keep it from going loose in transit. So I'll just remove that sticker. To assemble the handle onto the cleaner just slide it into position. Just check you don't catch any of the plastic moulding. It won't be pushed fully home, you'll have to start screwing the top and bottom screws. Don't screw one screw in all the way first. To avoid strain on the plastic, I suggest just screwing a few turns at the top and a few turns at the bottom. There we go, it's in place now. Keep doing that and then the handle should slide into place. If you hear any cracking noises, reposition it because sometimes the fittings on these machines can be a little bit skew if. So don't start tightening the screw until you know it's properly positioned. And I'll do what I'm doing, tighten each screw in turn. And then when you feel resistance, don't fully tighten them. Just tighten them a slight, slightly more, but don't over tighten the screws. Okay, that's the handle in position. The next thing we have to do is to attach the handle to the back of the machine. There are two Phillips or posi drive screws in the back. So you need to remove those first with your screwdriver. And then we can offer the handle up to the machine and screw the screws in, which you'll need to do from the front of the cleaner. So we'll have to take the bag door off. For ease of fitting the handle, you might want to remove this short hose if it's attached to the machine. The handle fits to the cleaner this way up and you can see where the screws were. There are two holes on the back just above the hose inlet. You need to ensure that it fits through like that. Then you need to hold it in place while we screw the screws from the other side. When you've removed the bag door and the bag, you'll find two screw holes here above the bag support tube. So this is where we need to insert the screws just by hand initially to get them in place and then tighten them with a Phillips screwdriver. Again, don't over tighten them and tighten each one in turn so you're not causing any strain on the plastic. That's nearly in, let's tighten the other one up. That's in firmly and a few more 
rotations of this screw should have the job done. There we go, that's the handle fixed. I've just got to reinsert the bag and put the bag door back on. I'm going to see if I can store the stair cleaning hose on the cleaner at all times, but officially you are supposed to keep it separate and only use this short hose when using the machine in upright mode. It may be possible to leave this permanently on board, but you might get a reduced pickup because the suction may be slightly reduced because it's having to go through this longer hose. Okay, I'll fit the long hose, see if it works first, and then I'll show you how to fit this short hose. The hose plugs in to the back of the machine here, so you just line up the two lugs, press it home and then you just twist until it locks into position. It's a bit stiff because it's new, hang on, there we go, so that's the hose in place. Now let's see if it will actually store on board, or it might be a little bit too long. Right, so it is possible to leave the stair cleaning hose on the machine, but there's a lot of slack and it's probably going to get in the way. So the official line from Hoover is you don't do this. If you want to clean stairs, you're going to have to attach the hose separately. So I'm going to take that off and put on the included short hose. Untwist that. So for regular carpet and hard floor cleaning, this is the hose you need to attach. So it fits in the same place as the stair cleaning hose with a push and a twist action. There we go. And then the silver end of the hose goes into the hole on the bottom of the cleaning head. It just stretches out, push it down till it's firmly in place. And then you can pop the rest of the hose on this clip here. So this, is officially how you should set the machine up when you're using it in upright mode. That's assembly almost complete. We've just got to put the cleaning tools in their storage positions. So in the lower storage position here, you put the stair nozzle or upholstery nozzle, just push in place until it clicks. And then above it goes the dusting brush. At the side here is where you put your pet turbo brush. And the extension wand with its nesting crevice tool goes here. And finally, you can store the cable on these hooks. There's the top hook and the fixed lower hook, which is also the carry handle. So now your Hoover Enigma is fully assembled and ready for use. Okay, let's have a closer look at this Hoover Enigma, starting at the bottom with this four position carpet height control. On setting one, that's for hard floors and very low pile carpets, such as carpet tiles. Setting two, it's for more delicate floors, such as vinyl or parquet floors, and for short pile carpet. Setting three is for medium pile carpet, and setting four is for luxury plush carpeting and when you're using the cleaning tools. On the underside of the cleaner, you have the rotating brush that helps pick up pet hair and gives your carpets a nice groomed appearance. This machine does take a belt that you'll need to replace from time to time. Belts are widely available online. Just search for Hoover Pure Power or Hoover Enigma drive belts. To replace the belts, you have to undo two screws to remove the top hood. It's quite straightforward and you'll find instructions how to do that in your manual. Both filters, the exhaust HEPA filter and the pre-motor filter, are washable in warm water. Make sure that they are 100% dry before reassembling them into your machine. The entire cable can be removed from the machine by turning down the top hook and releasing it in one go. To clean stairs, you need to remove the short hose and fit the included stair cleaning one. So just disconnect the short hose by removing it from the machine, giving it a twist. And you can actually leave it stored here on board and then simply fit the stair cleaning hose. On the end of the hose you can either attach the pet hair remover or the grooming nozzle. To extend the reach you can put on the extension wand and fit any of the nozzles directly to the end or to extend it even further you can put the crevice tool onto the end of the extension wand and you can also put any of the nozzles onto the end of that. So for example, if you want to do any high level dusting, you could attach this dusting brush, 
but bear in mind, as I said, it's quite stiff, the brush is on here, so don't use it on anything too delicate. But this way you can reach up to get at those cobwebs or any high level dusting you need to do. So I fitted the extension wand and the pet hair remover to the end of it. So let's see if this Hoover Enigma will clean up a standard flight of stairs. Right, I'm completely at the top and there's plenty of leeway in the hose. There's still a bit of extra stretch, so I can quite confidently say that you should be able to clean a full staircase with the Hoover Enigma safely at the bottom. Before I put some dirt down and give this Hoover Enigma a brief initial test on carpet and hard floor, I'd like to point out something that's been commented on in quite a few reviews, and that's this foot operated switch that releases the handle. It is very hard to push. So if you've got just your socks on, you might find it's hurting your feet to try and get this down. And even when you're pressing as hard as you can, you're gonna still hear a cracking noise as you lower the handle. That's a design Hoover have used for many years and haven't changed, and there's been a lot of complaints about it. So bear in mind that you might need shoes on or be prepared to press really hard on that pedal to release the handle. I've just put down some assorted dirt onto this short pile carpet, various bits and pieces, including rolled oats, tea leaves, dog hair, and even some tumble dryer lint, just to give us an idea of how well this Hoover Enigma performs. I'll just pass the machine forward and back through the middle of the mess and we'll just see how clean the path it is that it leaves. Having to press hard on this handle release. Okay, let's give it a go. fairly slowly over the carpet. Probably when you're vacuuming you'd go a bit faster than I did. But it's not done bad. Closer inspection reveals it's left some of the tea, the loose leaf tea, and here there is a faint line where it's not cleaned at all. That's what I dub my line of shame. That's just where the belt is on the underside of the machine. So obviously where the belt is, it's got a cover over it. So there's going to be no suction or little suction and certainly no brushing action. Okay, I'll just finish up cleaning the rest of this mess up, put down some dirt on the hard floor and that'll be it for this video. <laughs> So my first impressions of the carpet cleaning performance of this Hoover Enigma, it does deserve its A rating. It has picked everything up, including the dog hairs and the tiny particles of tea. Not bad. Let's see how it does on a hard floor. I'm going to use it on setting two, which is designed for more delicate flooring. I've just had a new floor fitted. I don't really want to risk damaging it. So we'll see what it does on setting two. Again, I'm having trouble with the handle release. It probably will sound quite a bit noisier in the kitchen. Okay, same as with the carpet, I'll go forward and back through the middle. impressions that looks pretty good there is a little bit of a groove in this floor so it's not all completely level but it has there's a couple of bits of the tea leaves here the loose leaf tea but on the whole it's done a pretty good job now that's where some reviewers might leave it but I'm going to show you the whole truth of this vacuum cleaner it hasn't done such a good job as this would have you believe 
because if I move the camera down, you can see it has pushed a lot of the debris in front of the nozzle. Now I might get that if I try to use the machine on a higher setting to raise the nozzle a bit further off the floor. But if I do that, I might pick, not pick up the fine particles such as the flower. But there's some more dirt here. I'll try it on setting three and see if that makes an improvement. See if it stops this snow plowing. Actually, that has worked slightly better regarding the larger particles. It hasn't snow ploughed any of the larger bits, but it has left some of the finer dust, some of the flour has been left. So you're not normally going to have such a mess on your kitchen floor. For everyday use, it should be fine. Well, that's about the end of my unboxing, assembly and mini test of the Uva Enigma bagged upright vacuum cleaner. So what's my verdict? Well, as far as bagged uprights go in the UK, you have very little choice, especially at this price point. So for around £80, there's not a lot more you can buy if you want a bagged upright. You can, of course, buy more expensive machines from Sibo and Miele, but they're going to cost you several times more than this Hoover Enigma will cost. So all in all, it's a pretty good machine. It picks up well on carpets. It did an acceptable job on the hard floor, apart from larger particles and it's relatively easy to use. It does clean up a full flight of stairs. The hose is really long, but the cord is fairly short. It's relatively noisy, but not too bad. But the main problem is the handle release. It's very hard to push, and the build quality of the machine isn't great. I'm not sure how long this machine would last with constant daily use. But I still would say it's worth looking at if you're in the market for a bagged upright vacuum. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, ask them below and stay tuned for my next video coming up very soon. Bye for now.